teams in two years. I mean, when a, a lot of scouts would be so you know I was thinking that, but then a lot of college coaches would come out, and I wouldn't know that they're who's who. But um, I never remember uh, Augie came to a game and introduced himself to me and said, "Yeah, we'd like to talk to you when you come to one of our games at Cal State LA, a doubleheader this Saturday." So. You know, there's a first kind of first recruiting trip to go down there with my dad on a Saturday morning and just see the whole thing from start to finish, pregame, the game. And yeah, this is like, I mean, being a 17 year old, a young 17 year old, it just like impressed me so much to watch that and try to see could I play with these guys? I mean, you know, remember these guys, I'm young. I skipped a grade. I never went to kindergarten. So, of course, when I graduated high school, uh, everybody's a, a year older than me throughout. So when I was 17, 18 at Cal State Fullerton, there were some 22, 23-year-olds. That's a big difference at that age. You know, that's four or five years. That's a huge difference at that time. So when I'm watching them playing and, you know, like, can I fit in here next year? I mean, can I, you know, because I want to start, I want to sit. You know, we all do, right? So I go, wow, this, you know, so it was really a, a, a fast, faster game. And, um, you know, he sold me. I had a couple other recruiting trips, you know, Arizona State and USC, but they wanted to give me half scholarship. Brock, Arizona State, and Dato, you know, because, you know, USC and Arizona State was, you know, but when Augie just was so nice, and then I started thinking about, you know, I just saw you three years ago at my banquet. I mean, now you're here. It's like somebody's writing this script here, you know? So, you, you know, so I go, you know what? I, I love it. It's close. I don't want to leave the state. I want to be close to my dad, my mom, and you know, my girlfriend at the time, uh, just, you know, my friends. Um, but it was very important to stay close, and it was only 15 miles away from West Covina, 17 miles, so I, I, I wanted to sign right away, so he offered me uh, to meet him and Dave Snow, met me at Coco's at the corner of um, right next to uh, what is it? Right, right next to Cassie Fulton on Chapman, and I forgot that State one. College. Yes, uh, yeah, that's it. Right there was a Coco's and we went in there, signed my letter of intent, $150 a month and books and, you know, and, and a three-year, you know, guarantee basically that he's going to, you know, get me better and I'll be able to achieve my dream by signing again, maybe again, someday. What, what was it, I mean, everybody talks about the charisma and <clears throat> his, his speaking ability and, and, you know, a lot of people always said that Augie always made you feel like you were the most important person in the room and all that stuff. Talk to me a little bit more. I mean, we'll probably be able to get into Augie as a coach, but as a recruiter, what was what was Augie like when it came to bringing in new new talented yeah. players? He 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 cared. You know, you can see right through him. He cared the passion that I saw when I was fourteen in that big one room. You know, I mean, he just listened. He cared. He uh, a straight shooter. You know, straight shooter tell you exactly what he feels. Um, but he, he, the thing was that bond of that he really wanted me. You know, and I'm sure he did it with other. Everybody's different. Every ball player is different. As a coach, you, you treat everybody. You know, you want to be the same. But they're you're different people, different athletes. Uh, but he just was. Uh, uh, I believed him, and listened to what he his plans of getting. You know, the stadium, even though it was. 20 years out, but he had to say that. And I thought well, a couple of years, we're going to have slight stadium. I mean, he had to say what he had to say, and he probably believed that at the time. But I mean, it's about forming 25 ball players to win the ultimate national championship of college baseball. And remember, at that time in 1977, when I was recruited to get there, um, I know they just went to the World Series in 1975, which was a kind of mir- miracle in itself, the second year. Division one or the first year of Division one, and they lose two in a row and they're out. But but just to get to Omaha, that school where it's at and how small it was, and it was a miracle at that time for the Pioneers beating, beating USC in yes. their own yard. Yeah, it's unbelievable against the vaulted Rodado, right? And USC with all its tradition and going into their yard yeah, and, and beating be, them, to go and the then to going to Omaha. Was, I mean, it, it seemed like, and obviously, you know, I wasn't even connected with Cal State Fullerton at the time, but. Talking with people, saying that was a bigger deal beating Rodado and and then and USC in their own yard to go to Omaha was bigger than getting to Omaha to some people. Well, yeah, I could see because it was like I said, uh, the odds were completely stacked. I mean, the athletes, the difference of them guys are high price athlete USC. So we, you know, the the guys behind before me, the Hortons and and all the Jody Robinson. 
I mean, like Jack Romero. I mean, all these guys, you know, had to go in there and have a little chip on their shoulder. They had to. Because to go and accomplish that, to set that up, like basically setting the table for our team, mm-hmm. you know, the national championship team, um, I mean, it's priceless. It's priceless. And, and, and he did that after just two years there, Augie Garrido. And, and it wasn't just luck. It was him and his belief in his athletes and the way he looked right through us and got the best out of each person mentally and physically. And you do that times 25, times nine months. I mean, you can move, move my mountains that way. Mm-hmm. And that's what he did. And that's when I signed that lever in 10. And I never second-guessed it one, one uh, second at that time when I signed was it easier for you to buy into it because he had that that history with 1975 saying, hey, we can be the David versus Goliath, and we did it, and we can do it with you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew that he got there. He got to the dance. So, you know, and even if he didn't go to the dance in 75, I believe him so much that we are going to go to the dance because I believe in, 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 in my own way, just speaking for myself, coming from like kind of a championship round, for being a young 17 and already won the Corny World Series Championship, uh, we were runner ups in the Colt World Series Championship, two high school CIF championships. Uh, you know, so a lot of happened in four or five years where I felt like a winner, even though I really felt that, you know, wherever I go, I think I can help the team accomplish that as long as we have 25 ball players on the same page so when he's telling me this knowing that he already did go there and now i'm sitting with a letter of intent just sign it and it's 15 miles from home my dad's going to watch every game my mom can come see me i mean i just like are you kidding me this is god's it's intervention yeah all the puzzle pieces kind oh, of fell together and i'm only 17 and i'm sitting there coco scared you know scared to death meaning you know like wow this is big you know you definitely go from a, a little jog to a major sprint after your high school and walking on campus at Cal State Fullerton, you know, to try to do, you know, keep on your dream of doing something. Because we didn't go there just to, I mean, I, I, I'm sure I went to get my education, but it wasn't my primary. Baseball was my major. Right. So tell me about stepping on campus. Baseball doesn't play until the spring. So you, you step on campus fall of 77, correct? September 5th. 78 is, is your first season. So take us through that. That freshman year, transitioning it, to yeah, it, academics and then also athletics. Uh, it, it was um, a very tough year. Um, it was exciting because, I guess, because uh, not that I was cocky, I was very confident. I was a, a, a you know, and but I, I, I thought I'd walk right in, and, and because he told me I have a good chance, you know, start at second base. So I, my, my expectations were what he told me. So when I get on campus. I mean, just walking around school trying to figure out that was a nervous day. Very, oh my God, that first week, I mean, I don't, Lang's horse call. They come over here at the U- university lounge. I I was going crazy. I mean, I, a lot of people helped me, you know, getting around there. But when we started going to practice, because at that time you can play like 50 games in the fall. So September 5th, we started school. September 7th, we're on the field. Um, and all of a sudden, I, my first day of practice, you know, fall ball, right, for the 78 season, but it's September 77th. There's a the senior Frank Valorio that was a starting shortstop the year before for him. Now he's going to be the second baseman, and second is a guy that transferred this 22 years old Mike Garcia from Kenyatta all conference JC, that, and I'm third string, I'm third string first day out there, and there's a 23 year old, a 22 year old, and I'm 17, so didn't look good. I didn't think. I mean, I have confidence in my ability, but I'm still in shock. I'm like a fish out of water. But I'm going, I, I started getting that feeling in throughout the first week and two and three and then started playing games. I was not going to be a starter in this team, not the 78 team. And it really got me, it was a down year. I mean, that through the fall. Were you, I mean, were you feeling you got sold a bill of goods that was, you know, the bait and switch I, type thing? I, I, I felt... I mean, I wanted to, uh, yeah, and, and the story I never told anybody. Um, in November, or I'm sorry, October, November, I went there six, seven weeks when I knew, and my dad was always positive for me, just saying, I mean, I had supported parents, great. Um, I wanted to quit. 
I actually called the Dodgers and I know how it works and talked to my scout. What can I do to get, I'll sign for five can't you again. Let me get out of here. Because you can't do that. You're stuck. Three years. Or you can transfer to JC and wait till next year, you know. So I call Mount Sac. My hometown college, Mount San Antonio. Art Manzamania. He just died three years ago, 95 years old. Legendary JC coach, Art Manzamania. And I call him. And me thinking, you know, I was, you know, like a star in the Valley, West Covina, and all my credentials. I don't have to brag about it. They knew who I was. And he goes, Sammy. I go, hey, coach, I'm having a, a tough time at Cal State. You no, know, Augie, you know, I promise. I mean, I'm third, fourth spring. This is crazy. I'm not here to sit down the whole year. I'm not going to play. I'm going to work my butt off. I have. But, you know, I was down. I was 17. I'm a young man. It's, I'm going through a lot of emotions. And he goes, Sammy, I'd love to have you, but you know, Kenny Rogers is playing there right now. You know, they're three months in the fall, too. And Kenny was a good, good, great ball player from Northview, but I felt that I should be the second baseman if I went there for sure. But he kind of, you know, maybe I wasn't all that. I mean, like he wanted me, but you know, I have to beat him out. So I'm going, what? If he would have said, yes, come over, I love you, come, you'll start tomorrow. I would have. I had my uniform in my in my car, all packed, all my, and I was driving to Cal State Fulham to quit before that call. The coach man's mayhem, and then my dad called me for his cell phones, right? And I pull over, pay phone. So my dad goes, oh, yeah, do what you have to do, but I, I, I don't recommend it. I think you come back and you fight harder and you work harder and you show Augie, you know, that you don't have to be 22 or 23 to be a starter in this team. You can, you know, just go hard. Just work hard. Don't quit. Don't be a quitter. So I was in Cal State Fullerton, and I used a payphone right next to that um, uh, Coco's, you know. And um, I never, I went to practice, and and I sucked it up. And I stayed there. Um, wasn't happy, you know, you know, but I learned a lot. I learned, because this is the trial and tribulation time, where, you know, your best lessons are learned by sitting on the bench, not by playing. And wow, what experience it was for that year of 77 to 78. And it got even so bad that, I mean, I, I played, I only had 15 at bats. One five, three hits, 15 at bats in the year. So basically, they wanted me almost a richer. I could I qualify for that if I, but I wanted, I said, no, I want, to, I want to get in my junior quickly so I can get out of here and sign. So um, I remember um, we won the, our conference, and, uh, you know, I was a pinch runner. You know, <laughs> I mean, which I was pretty good at, <laughs> but you know, once a day, uh, or once a game, maybe, um, we're going to regionals against USC at, in 1978. And Augie comes to me at practice before we leave the next day. He goes, I'm, I'm not going to suit you up. We only have 24. But I go, what? You're not going to even suit me. And you just wear your jeans and you do the score and pick up the balls. So another, that was a kick. You know, uh, you know, so here I am. And at the time they had on Channel 9, the, the game live mm -hmm. from USC, um, that uh, you're not going to even suit up. So I had my Fullerton jacket, jeans, and tennis shoes. I'm in the dugout. And I vow to myself, I go, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him, everybody, that, um, you, know, it's, you know, when you eat some humble pie like that, you know, you, it's, it's a feeling for a 17, 18 year old. You, you, you just, I couldn't wait for the following year because now I'm out of this year. We end up losing the regionals. We should have won that. We were up three to two against USD. They come, they beat us and they go crazy at Dado and then they go and win the national championship. They go to Omaha, fly by it. Great team, great team, and we really should have won that that series. I mean that, that regional. So um, that was my freshman year. So what I did that that summer, I I played back in West Covina get my confidence back, you know, in the glory years with all my guys in there, West Covina, play the American Legion, get that confidence, work harder, tell Augie I can't wait for next year, you know. Now, I don't know how he was thinking. We never really went into that part of it, but, you know, from the way I perform in 77, 78, right, right? I mean, now I'm coming back to the 78, 79, 79 season. I, I'm sure nobody in their right mind would think that what happened would happen. So that was the, the extent of my freshman year. So Cal State Fullerton history, especially with the Dave Snows, 
going over to Long Beach and then creating that persona of the dirtbags and the grinders and, and, and you know, we always hear